you say you're a real estate broker, right? Because you're trying to sound fancy. I'm a real estate broker. They're like, you think that's going to create status? It doesn't actually create status. It creates friction because now the person's like, why is a realtor calling me? What's going on? And I'm sure this person who trained this is telling them to use a very professional tone. And then how are you today? When a telemarketer calls you, are you like, oh my God, it's Susie the telemarketer calling me. I'm so excited. Let me tell her about my real life. And no, it's a sales pitch. You, you got to do a lot of dials to get somebody to say yes to this, because this is like a straight up aggressive question. And he says right here, not interested. It's not like, hey, option one is not interested. Option two is like, well, we might be. Well, what if you got an incredible offer? I'm still not interested. Moving is a big deal. Think about it, moving is a huge deal. Most people don't wanna go out of town because they don't wanna pack a bag because it's too stressful to pack a suitcase for the weekend. And we're talking about packing up a whole house and memories, I can appreciate that. Why can you appreciate that they're not interested in selling your home? You haven't asked them one single question. Super sales line right here. I can appreciate that. No, you f***ing can't. You guys stop saying that. You can't appreciate anything because you mm -hmm. haven't asked them one time anything about themselves. You called and said, I want a commission. Give me a commission. What do I need to do to get a commission? And then you forced your way down their throat. Yo, yo, what's up? Vikram Deal here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, this is where we teach real estate agents what to do, what not to do, which is super important in our industry. We also teach you how to do what you need to do, like what to say, the pace, the tone. Because if you start a sales call with how I just started a YouTube video, it's probably going to be a little weird with somebody you don't know. So yesterday uh, I was on a sales call. The guy gave me a script and it's a circle prospecting script. They call it the golden script. It's crazy because it's actually a agent at Real Brokers where I currently have my license hung and it made me cringe. It was an absolutely cringe worthy script. And I want to share it with you because I want to share with you why real estate agents are actually one of the lowest ranked professionals in the world, right? Worldwide real estate agents are ranked beneath politicians, car salesmen, right? At the same level as some of the worst salespeople in the world, if you go to Reddit, they say, I can't believe real estate agents still exist, right? We have smartphones. Why do we need realtors, right? Like this is the stuff that the real estate agent faces every single day. And I don't believe it's because you're bad. And I don't believe it's because you don't care. And I don't believe it's because you don't work hard. And I don't believe it's because you don't actually genuinely want to help people. I believe it's because of books like Exactly What You Say, right, uh, in real estate, which is the most salesy book ever. I believe it's because when you are talking to a prospect, you have not studied psychology and you don't understand what triggers them. So you hear something that some other agent says, you're like, oh, that sounds good. But we don't do the research because we're so busy. And so I want to do it for you. And in fact, I have done it for you. And in fact, I'm going to give it to you right now because if you utilize this type of a script, you are going to want to punch your face in every single day. And so here's the golden script. Circle prospecting. Notes. Watch your tone, your vocal cues, your filler words, right? Well, actually, the the fill right, uh-huh, right? When you when you utilize filler words, oh, right, um, Okay, so uh, when you when, when when you said that you guys might be thinking of selling your home if you if you were able to find a, a, a home, you, help me out. Walk me through what what what's going on over there, right? Filler words are conversational, right? I can tell that whoever's doing this is having to pound the pavement to get appointments. And don't get me wrong, if you want to work extra hard, you can. But I personally don't want to work extra hard. Okay. Remain calm and deliver the pitch, right? Just the wording in the notes that deliver the pitch, right? They're, they're telling you that we're pitching somebody, not serving somebody. So right out the gate, hi, may I please speak to blank? Well, 
right when you say, hi, May, please speak to blank, it immediately triggers sales resistance because who says this? Salespeople, right? Salespeople. Think about the last telemarketing call. Hi, is Vikram there? Hi, may I please speak to Mr. Deal? Like, what do you want? Well, Mr. Deal, the reason I'm calling today, right? Then they say, I'm a real estate broker over at Real. Like, what? I'm a real estate broker over at Real. So remember, you guys, I just told you, remember, I just told you how much people love realtors. So when you say you're a real estate broker, right? Because you're trying to sound fancy. I'm a real estate broker. They're like, you think that's going to create status. That line is to try to create status. It doesn't actually create status. It creates friction because now the person's like, why is a realtor calling me? What's going on? And if you use a normal tone, like most realtors do, and I'm sure this person who trained this is telling them to use a very professional tone. And then how are you today? When a telemarketer calls you, be real. Are you like, oh my God, it's Susie, the telemarketer calling me. I'm so excited. Let me tell her about my real life. And oh, let me tell her about how my dog is dealing with some, some stomach issues. And my daughter just told me that, you know, she's not doing super well with school and She's really stressed out and, oh, let me tell, nobody cares. You guys, don't ask how you're doing on a sales call when you don't know the person. That's a sales line. It's not nice because they don't care. Agent, I'm glad to hear that, Bob, right? And he even says, good, how can I help you, right? Even the pro, like, even this person who says it is like, this person, it says, good, how can I help you? Not like, hey, man, I'm doing great, dude. Like, oh my God, let me tell you about my life. No. It's a sales pitch, right? I'm glad to hear that, Bob. So I, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm working with a couple families that are looking to move into the blank area. I came across your property, right? Now, this line is actually not bad, right? So I would make this line like, hey, man, I, I was working. I, I'm working with, um, and I wouldn't say a couple of families because most people don't believe realtors are working with a couple of families. So I'm working with, um, with the Smith family. And they're actually looking to move into your exact neighborhood, right? So they they asked me to call, um, you know, at, on their behalf to see if there was any neighbors that you might know thinking to sell the property. When you use a third person, right? Like you don't have to, you don't have to sell your property. Do you know a third person you could possibly introduce me to? It lowers friction, right? So I'm just calling to introduce myself. Like they don't care about you and ask if you would consider selling if you got the right number. You guys, selling a home's a pretty big deal, right? So you, you gotta do a lot of dials to get somebody to say yes to this because this is like a straight up aggressive question. And he says right here, not interested. It's not like, hey, option one is not interested. Option two is like, well, we might be. I'm gonna share a call with you just so that you can hear a good call from one of my clients. Well, what if you got an incredible offer? I'm still not interested. Okay, so there's absolutely no magic number that would remotely pique your interested. No, we love our house. Moving is a big deal. Think about it. Moving is a huge deal, right? Most people don't want to go out of town because they don't want to pack a bag because it's too stressful to pack a suitcase for the weekend. And we're talking about packing up a whole house and memories we're talking about packing up like maybe where their firstborn child was. We're talking about packing up where maybe they, you know, lost a puppy, right? A few months ago. And when I talk about all dogs, they're all puppies. They're all puppies. It doesn't big, big puppies, little puppies, right? We're talking about where they went to prom. We're talking about where maybe their kid got engaged, right? We're talking about Christmases. We're talking about not just you, you guys, a home is made, right? A home is made out of out of just bricks and stones, but the memories inside of it, right? That's, that's what creates attachment. The agent, I can appreciate that. Why can you appreciate that they're not interested in selling your home? You haven't asked them one single question. Super sales line right here. I can appreciate that. No, you fucking can't. You guys stop saying that. You can't appreciate anything because you haven't asked them one time anything about themselves. You called and said, I want a commission Give me a commission. What do I need to do to get a commission? And then you forced your way down their throat. Well, before I get off the line, let me just ask you one qu one last question. What would change or have to happen to change for you to decide? The market's hot right now. And if it could be a great time to, to cash out on that invest, 
A home is not an investment, y'all. Where you rest your head every night is not an investment. That's not an investment, all right? Your business is an investment. Your rental property is an investment. Now, when you're thinking of moving, maybe it's an investment. And sure, when you dial 500 people, you'll probably get one or two. They're like, well, yeah, I'll take you up on that offer, right? Let me see what you got. But that doesn't mean you're going to get the listing because you're already starting off so combative. The prospect's going to say something like, well, I need to talk to my wife. I'm not sure. Like, right. And then we're going to say this. I completely understand. I don't understand anything. Again, I don't understand anything. Right. I don't understand anything because I was never curious about them. I was only curious about me. Look, this isn't a sales call. You ask them, watch this, y'all. Like, this is why you get hammered. Blah, blah, blah. Who is this? I'm glad to hear. I'll keep this brief. Um, One, one. Okay. Would you consider selling one? If you got an incredible offer, two. If there's no magic number, three, right? What would need to change? Four, right? You ask them four times if they wanted to sell. And then you're like lying to them straight to their face. Look, this isn't a sales call. I wasn't trying to convince you to sell your home. Really? If you got an incredible offer, what would have to happen or change for you to decide? That is not manipulation at the highest form. The person has said no, 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 no. And you now you're lying to them. I genuinely want to introduce myself and get a commission check and see how I could be of service. No, you aren't. You never ask them. You never ask them anything about them, about their current situation. You don't care. I want to send over my information so you can put a face to the voice. Why would I ever want to talk to you? You are an a-hole. I would never, ever want to talk to you. If my mom told me that somebody called her and said this to her, I would tell my mom, give me the phone number of that person. I'd call that agent up. I would let that agent know exactly what they did to lose out on a really easy client. Because if my parents ever had thought of selling their home, like my parents are super easy, right? My mom's like the most responsive person ever, like the ideal client, right? Couple million dollar home like the simplest person ever to deal with. Like, she's like, okay, tell me what I need to do. She's like, you, you're you the professional, you tell me, right? If you want me to teach you how to cook Indian food, I'll tell you exactly what to do. But if you if it come to selling a home, I'm going to call my son or I'm going to listen to you, right? So look at all of the salesiness. If they show the slightest interest, right? Like it's just a straight up sales call, right? Now, let me again, let me ask you the question. You got this call, how would you feel? right? Be real. If you got this call, how would you feel? Because the, we, we think only in our world, well, I need to get another commission. And I was told to do this and I was told to do that. And, and if I do this and I do that and I do this, me, 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 maybe they'll, maybe they'll work with me. Maybe they'll do a transaction with me. Me, 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 me. Now I'm going to share a better call. All you need to do is hear how this person opened the call versus how this other guy opened the call. And you'll see that there's a world of difference. Hi, uh, Mr. Dang. Dan, yeah. Yeah, this, do I have the right numbers? This is Mr. Dang. Yeah, how can I help you? Hi, uh, yes, it's just Ryan Markowitz here. Um, I promised my clients I would search for homes in the 10305 zip code. Was just wondering if you happen to know anyone in the area that, you know, might consider selling their property? Mm, probably and not at this time, unless I find something myself. Got it. All right. Did you hear that? So Mr. Ryan Markowitz from uh, the New York area has been working with me for a few months and we taught him to slow down and ask questions, right? And not to ask if the seller, right? Circle prospecting script. We reviewed that call yesterday. I got the script last night. It's kind of like God's like make a video. Don't ask if they're going to sell. Ask if they know somebody looking to sell, right? When you ask if somebody else Hey, do you know anybody looking to possibly sell? Well, I don't know anybody looking, but I might be willing to sell. Oh, and Ryan wasn't expecting that, right? Like you could tell Ryan wasn't expecting that because most people don't know anybody. Most people aren't looking to sell, but immediately just guess what? That guy's got two properties to sell, both over a million dollars. And he wants to buy a property that's probably a million and a half to two, right? Oh, it was an expired listing. The guy hit Ryan in the middle of the call with, well, I already have an agent. And Ryan was like, oh, well, that's great. You know, I was just curious, like, how has your agent helped you find like the the active and passive properties that aren't on the market? And he goes, what? He goes, yeah, well, like, you know, there's this thing called the buyer's universe. 
and there's active buyers that we know like on the MLS and then there's passive buyers and there's active buyers like we don't know that like agents have and like blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, well, would it be important if, because you just said that there's no market, no homes on the market. He says, and you're right, there's probably no homes on the MLS in the area you're looking for. But it, would it be a beneficial for you if we could show you how we find properties that aren't on the MLS? And the guy goes, well, yeah. And then he was able to use the game plan frame and book in an appointment. And Mr. Markowitz is going on three listing appointments this week off of two and a half hours of circle prospecting expired listings. He decided to take a new approach. I, I couldn't even made that up myself. I was like, oh my God, bro, that's brilliant. He's like, well, yeah, I'm just calling the expired. And instead of saying, hey, I see your home is on the market. He's like, I'm just calling them up and saying, hey, I see that, you know, you like, I, I asked them if they know anybody looking to sell their houses. He's like, bro, it works so well. It's like, I just took your circle prospecting script and I'm just calling the expires with it. And he's booking appointments left and right. And there's no resistance. So you guys, I don't monetize this channel. You see, there's no ads on here, right? That might change in the future, but right now there's not. If you got value out of this, all I ask is that you put a like and a comment, share this with your broker, share this with some friends. If we don't change the real estate industry, our commissions are going to keep getting condensed and condensed and condensed, which means you're going to have a harder time, right? We're already at 4 million transactions versus five and a half, six during the peak, right? Australia already doesn't have a buyer side representation. We are not going to last if we keep being salespeople. So I love you. If you want some more help, right? Join me inside of my Facebook real estate group, the Real Estate Sales Dojo, where I go live once or twice a week. Um, and I actually train you and let you ask questions. And you can really like go deep on your script for free, right? Or if you want more advanced training, you want our portal where we have all of our scripts, everything's written out. Right. We took the best of Jeremy Miner, the best of Sharon Srivasa, the best of NLP, the best of Tony Robbins, my $250 million experience. And I put it all into one beautiful program that all you have to do is plug into and utilize to go four, five, seven deals a month. Like our boy Jan Michaels out of New Jersey or my good friend Molly Mikas in the Quad Cities near Chicago, right? Mario Estrada in the Pismo Beach area crushing it. His team is crushing it. He came from a team that had the traditional sales, never did more than four or five, six sales a year. Last year, he did almost 12, right? Doubled his business and his price point. So I got to run, but I will see you soon.